Okay. Uh, uh, Sandra, if you could open up the uh, yep. education and planning committee meeting. Yep, thank you. All right, so uh, this is the education and planning committee of October 4th. All right. Let's cancel. All right, so I'm calling that to order now at 4.32. And the first item on the agenda is a review of the September 6th minutes. Any questions, comments, concerns regarding the minutes? Okay. Enrollment report. Michael Fisher, yep. Okay, so for all intents and purposes, uh, credit enrollment is pretty much like it for the semester. There'll be slight variations. And some of the members do the late start classes. Uh, Gemini enrollment is in great fluctuation. The Gemini registrations are being processed as we speak. So I think in another month or so, we can have a pretty good idea of what the Gemini enrollments look like. And, and also that goes for that credit enrollments for the semester. Any questions on the enrollment report that was in your packet? It just seems like a pretty, pretty good year. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Up by 9%. So far. For a role perspective, yes. Uh, no, not up by. You want to elaborate on George, uh, Trustee Cushman mentioned we're up nine percent. You want to elaborate on where we're at, actually at? Um, yeah, not nine nine percent. So where, where are you seeing the nine percent? It's on our graph. Home update for fall twenty twenty three. See, do we have the right numbers? Oh, total credit. Okay. So that that's due to some variation in processing with the Gemini program. So last year, at the time of this report, we had processed 458 registrations. Um, this year, we processed 831. If you look at the most recent enrollment report, that's leveled out. I think I, I think last year there was probably some delay in collecting registrations due to COVID. So yeah, that 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 nine percent flip is really because of uh, Gemini. It's because of Gemini. Yeah. If you use that word over Gemini. <laughs> so <laughs> from a from an active state standpoint, without Gemini, we're at about three percent correct headcount increase and about five percent FTE increase based on more full time and part time students and rolled out of our traditional students. Uh, as happy as I was with seeing the rise in enrollment, you know, I guess we're all kind of wondering, it might be a fluke. I guess we've really got to look and see next year or the year after to see if maybe we're okay. maybe on an upward trend. I'm hoping we are, but. Me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't think any of us would be bold enough to make a prediction at this right. enrollment. Pretty <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, we heard from our thank you. We heard from our auditor. Oh yeah, no, I, I just talked with, talking with the president's on, on as the well. Right. So well, Bonadio kind of sees it across the state. Had mentioned that uh, that's right. He was seeing it across community colleges as well as four-year institutions. Yeah, I think so. I think SUNY released some information recently as a sector of community colleges, and SUNY are about one point nine percent. So we're up a little bit more than the average. And if you put in a whole numbers, it was about, sorry, go ahead, please. No, I said this positive, you know, across the board. Yes. Yeah. There, there was a whole number that was given, and it was 3,600 and some odd students and change. There were the increase overall for SUNY, and of that, 3,000 of those students were community college students. Well, percentage basis, we'll, we'll get final numbers on that, yeah. so in November or December, there's still a lot of fluctuation in the system. So, including the benchmark data, that's still Thank you. Just wondering if there's any, is it too early or are there any indications for spring in terms of any enrollment? I mean, is anybody enrolling? Did they enroll for the whole year or did they enroll just semester by semester? semester, by semester. It is, okay. We start enrollment for the spring in November. Okay, all right. I usually think of spring enrollment as a derivative of the fall. So, right. if we're up in the fall and Assuming our retention rate is similar to the previous year, then we should be up again in the spring. Yeah. So new students for the spring are down to the point. Usually it will spell success in the spring and fall. 
that's all. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, student success. We have a presentation uh, provided in the CAPS presentation. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the CAPS at FLCC, Dr. Trista Morrell. Um, I, uh, I almost dressed up for this, um, but then I decided that I needed instead to show you the me that my students see, because in the end, the impetus for me being here is all about perception. Because on those first days of school, my students don't care that I'm Dr. Trista Merrill. They don't care that this is my 20th year at FLCC. They don't care that I'm the chapter advisor for PTK. They don't care that I'm the director of honors. They don't care that I'm a professor of English. What they want to know is, am I approachable? Am I someone that they can learn from for the next 15 weeks? And so that's why I'm here today to talk about perception and about the fact that I want to give a new face to honors and I want to call it CAPES at FLCC. And first, I'm going to tell you what that actually means, and then I'm going to tell you why I want to do it. And then I'm going to tell you how I want to do it, and then I'm going to ask you if you'll support me in doing it. So first is that what I want to do is give honors an identity. Because underneath whatever I'm wearing, including the ink on my arms, underneath all of that stuff, I am all of those things that I've listed. It's just whatever face I happen to put on for whatever group that I'm gonna go speak to and why I'm gonna go speak to that group. So what we're doing is we're not changing honors at its core because honors is, it's a beautiful thing. It is transformative. It is, it can change lives in ways that I never expected when I first took on honors as a thing. And so I don't wanna change that. But I do want to change the face that honors gives to those who don't know what honors actually is. And so what I want to do is I want to give it an identity within FLCC, which is perfect because it doesn't require us to change colors. We don't have to have logos. We don't have to do anything fancy. We don't have to do anything with the FLCC brand because that's already very strong. And I don't want to change any of that either because I love this place. I just Honors is a space within that place that needs its own face, that needs its own identity. And so we're going to even keep the name Honors. So it'll be CAPES at FLCC and Honors Community. And the CAPES is an acronym. It's not like I woke up one day and said, I want to wear a cape. <laughs> Although I did, I will admit that I did order a cape. <laughs> um, it's my husband's idea. And if he's going to tell me I can go buy a cape, then I'm totally going to buy one. But anyway, CAPE stands for what is really at the core of honors. And anyone who knows honors can attest that this is what honors is all about. And I've dry run, ran this past some students. And as I was reading the words in, li in the line, I got nuts. Um, and, and that was enough for me. So it's about curiosity. Stay curious. It's about acceptance, both of others and of themselves. It's about passion. Honors is all about passion. That's 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 what it boils down to is that half the problem we have with honor students is that 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 their ideas are too big to fit in a 15 week class um it's about exploration of ideas of worldviews of perceptions of themselves and it's also about self-discovery it's about students figuring out who they are as learners and as members of the flcc community and then the community of the world around them so why change it well Students can't stay curious if they never were curious in the first place. If they never walked into my classroom to see that I was indeed approachable, then they're never going to be able to figure out what honors is. And that's the thing is the word honors is scary, especially coming from the high schools, where in a lot of places, the word honors automatically means it's only for the smart kids. Is it? It's for the smart kids, but it's not only for the smart kids. And that one word is a huge difference. 
some heroes do wear capes. I can't even admit that. Um, and also that it, it comes down to who does well in honors. And it's a lot of students who are automatically going to be nervous to try new things. It's a lot of neurodivergent students, a lot of first generation students. It's a lot of students who are non-traditional aged, um, are coming back to college after having careers or coming back to college because they can't stay away, which I had a quote for in the next slide. It's students, um, and I'm going to list a whole bunch of adjectives and or the, a whole bunch of nouns, groups of kids in high school. And I, I will preface this list by saying I was all of these kids. Um, so I don't feel bad saying this. it's the theater kids. It's the ones who write poetry. It's the ones who are in the band. It's the ones who are um, in the art club or the English um, literary magazine. It's all the kids who struggled to find a space to fit wherever they was that they were. And one of the things I've heard over and over again, which gives me chills every time I do, is when I ask students what honors means to them, they say it means home. It means a sense of belonging. It's a place where I am accepted for who I am and what I bring to the table. It's students who are comfortable disclaiming on the third day of class that they have bipolar disorder or they're struggling because they have four kids at home and they're a single mom. And this is the first place where they feel comfortable actually bringing their child to class because they have nowhere else to take that child. But they're okay because they know that their honors classmates will be okay. This quote up here is from um, Samuel Schumann, who writes, um, who wrote in the monograph for the National Collegiate Honors Council, and he said, students fear and avoid honors programs because they success, suspect they will be outclassed by other participants. Students may have serious misperceptions of what honors programs offer them. So this is something that's actually been studied by people in the field. Um, and research has been done about the stigma attached to that word honors. And, um, and it's not that I want to remove any of the rigor. Like I said, I don't want to change anything that's at the core of honors. I don't want to change what honors actually is. I just want to encourage more students to find honors because they'll do well there, but they can't do well there if they never actually find it. And as much as I can come up here and say whatever I want about it, and I can have Samuel Schumann here from MCHC say things about it, what's more important is what students have said about honors, students who have experienced it. Ash is an honor student. Um, she will be the first person to tell you that she doesn't have the best grades. Um, she's a single mom of five, all who are under the age of 15. Um, and she's a single mom and just is just putting them in through, trying to put them through school on her own. She has bipolar disorder. She has major depressive disorder. Um, she doesn't have the best grades. But what she does have is, to quote FLCC values, perseverance. She will not give up. Um, she absolutely will not give up. Um, she's graduating. Um, she was supposed to graduate, um, but had some, had, had some medical episodes over the summer, so has a couple of classes to make up, and she's going to do it. She just had to get her kids straightened out and, and ready to go to public school for the first time because she had to pull them out of the school they were in because she couldn't afford it anymore. Um, so but she's gonna come back and she's gonna take those two classes. And she said, honors felt like entering a scary forest and then finding friends along the way and then building a village of escaping. It honestly took one honors class to undo the years of lies of being told I wasn't smart. The honors dinner, Ash said the, that um, honors was the first, place, first time anybody had ever told her she was smart enough and that included her parents. And, um, yeah, I just, I'm done. You know, that's all I really need to say is that she never would have ended up in this class if some friends hadn't dragged her along because they were taking her. Warren is a student who graduated in 2017 from the culinary arts program. He's on full disability and can't really work. And he keeps coming back every semester to take a class because he can't stay away. He wants to keep learning. And every semester he says, I'm intimidated to come into this room full of young people. And every semester he's like, they're so welcoming and I love it here. <laughs> um, but he said, honor classes have sounded scary my entire life. 
I launched Broners in high school. Honors has meant the world to me. It, in my opinion, gives me an idea of where my intelligence stands. It gives me a chance to broaden my knowledge base. It gives me a connection to people that I can challenge myself alongside. And every semester he audits. And every sem summer he's like, do you have enough, or every break in between semester, he's like, do you have enough students in class yet? Do you have enough yet? Because he can't audit until there's enough students who were forced to run. Um, and he's doing it again this semester. Um, but I can put quotes on a slide, but it is much cooler if I actually have a student come and talk to you. So I brought one with me. Um, and uh, talk about perception. And uh, this is Eliza. Who's, it did dress up, right? <laughs> like this is perception, right? This is this is what as soon as I saw her, I was like, like this is gonna work. But this is Eliza, and she's gonna tell you a little bit about her experience with honors and and the time at FLCC. So my name is Eliza. I am a humanities major. Currently, I am the secretary of the Student Veteran Organization, and I am also the secretary of Active Minds, which is a mental health club. Um, I'm also starting off great this semester after two 4.0s in a row, um, which all sounds really great and wonderful, like I'm well accomplished, but this is my third time coming to FLCC. My previous GPA was like a 1.96. Um, my mental health got in the way of me coming to school and then my husband enlisted and I moved away from school and I didn't try again for years because I felt like I was not smart enough. I found out that I was um, that I am on the autism spectrum, um, which made a lot of things make sense. And there was just so much that I felt like was wrong with me that I would not find a place to fit in at school. Um, my husband had taken one of Trista's classes and encouraged me to start there and to start with honors specifically. Um, I argued with him because he was wrong. I'm too stupid to go to school and I'm way too stupid to start in honors. Um, we went back and forth and he convinced me to come on campus. I stood outside of Trista's office crying because I felt like there was absolutely no way that this woman with all of these degrees and skills and information was going to look at me and be like, yeah, you belong in my class. Um, but she was very welcoming. I saw her tattoos and immediately felt comfortable. Like she wasn't going to judge me for having tattoos. And I gave her class a shot and it changed my life. Um, to put things in perspective, I'm here talking to all of you. And the only person that I really know is Dr. Nye. Um, this time last year, I wouldn't leave my house. I wouldn't talk to strangers. I wouldn't do anything to benefit myself. Um, all I would do was stay home and like go to virtual therapy sessions. This, what you see now, everything that I am presenting to you has come from honors. And I almost didn't take that leap because I was so afraid of the word. And to step outside of myself, um, I actually had a conversation with another student today who they were talking to me about how like, they enjoy the classroom environment that we're in and like they have considered honors, but it's too scary and it's too much work and they're not smart enough. And I had the opportunity to tell them what honors actually is. And I think that if there was something like this, that was like more approachable and if people really knew what honors was like and knew that honors is a community, not some big scary thing, I think that we would have a lot more people in the community. So how do I want to do this? I went on and found a picture of a cat wearing a cape. <laughs> um, I always bring this up because cats are the unofficial mascot of honors because, you know, curiosity and cats is a thing. Um, and I always ask this, and if you were at the um, cabinet meeting, then you can't answer this. But does anybody know that curiosity kills a cat, right? Does anybody know the second half of the phrase? You can't answer either. There's a second half that nobody ever knows. And it's curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought him back. And that's why cats have nine lives, right? Because they continually are curious about things and they continually solve that or, or find the answer to that satisfaction. And then they start over again and they keep going, but they won't start over again and they won't keep going if they never started in the first place. And FLCC, I love this place. Um, I've been here for, like I said, this is my 20th year. I've never looked anywhere else. Um, 
I, I'm a SUNY girl the whole way. I never went to community college because when I graduated from high school, community college was, um, you know, it's just 13th grade. It's nothing. Um, but when I got hired here, I fell in love with it because the, the teaching and the students are what this place privileges. Or te the students and the, their, thereby the teaching of them um, is is privileged above all else. And and that's what I'm here to do is I want to help other students like I, I can't tell you her story is is incredible and unique and hers, but it's also one that I've heard varying degrees of and versions of <clears throat> all along. Some of you know Alicia Nolan, who was a student here recently who is now pursuing her bachelor's degree at NCID um, and won the um, Student Chancellor's Award. Um, She's an amazing student, same thing. She accidentally fell into honors and never would have done it if she hadn't just wanted to take a class about myths and monsters um, because of that stigma of that word. So what I really want to do is I want to continue to use our cat mascot because it's easy, it's already established. Um, we already have shirts with eyes on it, they're cat eyes, so change that. I want to change the honors convocation to the honors cape stone because it's clever. And I like it to be clever, right? It's funny and clever and funny and stupid and goofy and fun. Because when I told Dr. Nye about this, because I started with him, I've been trying to do something like this for years. And when I started with Dr. Nye and we went to lunch over the summer, I won't tell them all. But the other part, I when I told him this, he's like, we can put a cape on flick. And then he started laughing and goes, I'm sorry. I'm like, no, that's exactly the kind of thing that I should that I want to do. Because learning should be fun. And if it's not fun, then what's the point? Right? Learning and education and the, the satisfaction of your curiosities so that you can find new curiosities and new questions and new things to explore. That's what enriches lives. And that's what's going to change the world. I tell my students every semester that you guys are the ones who are going to change the world because my generation and the ones before it messed it up and we're really sorry, but here we'll fix it. And now let's work on the tools that we need. And if they want to do it, a, a, um, I have a student who wants to do his his modern, development and modern horror project on how the Indian culture is working on using cinema and women in cinema to challenge its own caste system and fund it. And I'm like, like in a horror uh, class. I try well, let's do it. Let's figure out how to do it. And this is the kind of stuff that I want to do. But if I can't get those kids in you know, that class, then who knows what potential will make the ground and who knows what students were missing because we're not helping to light their fire because traditional class settings don't work for them. They need to sit in circles. They need to have class discussions. They need to realize they're not alone, that there's other students like them. There's other students who are in theater, who write poetry, who are neurodivergent in whatever countless ways that can be defined. So I want to do these things. Like I'm doing a convocation again, or the Cape Stone again this semester because students have asked me to. They're like, this is my last semester here and the convocation was great last semester. Can we do one of those fall things? Because I was doing them only once a year. Okay, I guess I'm doing one now because the students want one. Um, we can have Cape's classes. We can have Cape's faculty. Um, and it's all it is, is just a forward facing name change. Hemlock Hall. We're already committed to that and it's already working. I have to, I walked into my class the other day and two students were sitting at the chessboard playing chess. I and mean, then we're asking a third student about the rules of chess because neither one of them were chess players and they didn't really know what they were doing. But like when we get a guy over there, can we make him a, and he can move anywhere? Right? He's like, no, and comes over and starts teaching him how to play chess. And then class started. Um, so we're already doing some of this. And so what I want to do is and what I'm here to do is ask you if you will endorse my desire to put a new face on honors without changing the intellectual rigor, without changing the exit stuff that we have in place with GPAs and the number of points that are needed for honors so that it transfers and the rubrics we use to assess all of those pieces so that when students graduate here as honors study scholars, we have all the documentation to say they did the work. But I want to know, will you help support me in getting them on that journey in the first place so that they can then do that work? 
I'm going to get him in the room. And I would like you to help me to do that. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Thank you. Oh, wait, oh, wait, one okay. more thing. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. The last slide, and then, I, and then I'll happily end it. This is the new shirt design. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm very proud of this. Um, Sim asked me at the cabinet meeting if if they had if you know if he, he wanted to wear a cape we can make that happen. But then Kurt in my department was like, do we have to wear a cape? We've got capes option. <laughs> capes optional. But this is going to be the new honors T-shirt. So this will be on the front. So we're keeping the stay curious because it's important. And then on the back, capes at FOCC and honors community. So we're keeping the word honors. So any student who's looking for the word honors will still find it. We're not hiding it. We're just giving a face to it as well. So students who are likely to be, because they never read the fine print unless they're looking for it, right? None of us do. You don't read the fine print unless we need to know something. So if the students are looking for honors, they'll find it. But if they're likely to be intimidated, intimidated by honors, then, then maybe this will be more approachable. Maybe this will be the tattoos on the arm that said, okay, my tattoos are okay. Um, maybe this is the, the approachable of honors so yeah so they're now yes um i just wanted to share that i resonate with both of you um i thought uh finger leaks was going to be like 13th grade i had a large stigma about honors in high school uh i couldn't finish my classes and my teachers told me you're not going to make it through college you know if you can't get through my class and uh, I came here and I took an honors course with um, Nearing Bliss and uh, he would let us read short stories and we would just come into class and discuss them. Mm -hmm. And um, it built up my confidence. I wasn't dumb. I just thought differently than the classes that I was squeezed into previously. Mm -hmm. And um, I hear that a lot from the honors students. And um, as I can see from you, it just builds up your confidence. Yeah, and realize that there was more than one kind of smart until honors. Yeah, and everybody thinks differently, but that stigma coming in from high school is still definitely there. And I, I love what you're doing with the rebranding of it. Thank you. And thank you for sharing too. That's how do you help? That one I can do. Yes. I guess the one question I have, and I'm sure you've thought of this. Like me, they, as the students leave and they're they're applying to another college or they're applying for a job, honors has a tremendous value. Yes, there. absolutely. How how will they how will they address that as opposed to capes? That... Yeah, like I said, the capes part is only going to be sort of an internal um, face that we're going to use to help recruit and help get students in. When they graduate, it will remain on what, what we have is a, a graduation designation. It will remain thus. And so students who have earned the 15 points of honors credit um, through coursework, through events, through reflective essays and journals, um, and um, will still be honor study scholars. It will appear on their transcript, just like it does now. So all of that is not changing. So when a student graduates as an honor study scholar now, I write a letter that lists all of the honors things that they did and as support. And we also have when they did um, when they if they do a contract or go to events and they write an essay as part of that reflective piece. Um, I have rubrics that I, I measure their writing against their journals and their reflective pieces because we took honors through assessment boot camps and we have learning outcomes and we have we're in the process of assessing right now. So all of the exit pieces are still there and those aren't going to change. Yeah, most of the branding just. Absolutely. And maybe just the students understanding. I thought yes. they were in honors. Yes, <laughs> because once they're in and they see what it is, then we can better explain what it is and it, there's less of a stigma. I don't want to use the phrase gateway drug, but. <laughs> <laughs> what if you're allergic to cats? Dogs, dogs work too. <laughs> I'll you go no, that's okay. Um, I, I just also wanted to add that, uh, with my experience in honors, uh, was really comforting, and you know, like I said earlier, building up the confidence. But as well as, I felt like I learned more in my honors classes than any other similar English class that I had, because 
I got to hear everyone's ideas rather than the professor telling me what I should think about it. And, um, you know, that's like my biggest preach to all the students here, you know, try some honors courses, you know, pick a book. It is so much fun. And um, I love it so much. It's my biggest preach here. <laughs> they're, kind, they're like kind of, we have little ambassadors. <laughs> so I apologize for being a little bit late missing this, but did um, you mention how you wanted the board to support you? Like what would be a way or ways in which we could show you support? Um, that's a good question. I hadn't thought specifically about that other than for you to say, we'll go for it and then I will we'll go for it. Um, I'll do what I always do, but, um, but I mean, I, I, I did. would encourage you to think about that. Sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. but um, like maybe we should all get stay curious t-shirts or something. Yeah. <laughs> they're on, they're on order. So I, I, I may have planned ahead and assumed that it was all going to go well because I ordered the shirts already because I needed them in time for the honor center. Um, but another thing actually, um, is that, um, I, I will include, um, we have the honors talk series is coming up this, um, we have five talks that are planned throughout the semester, um, that are, I think I have six along coming back for two different panels on, um, different things. And most of them are honor students who are like, yeah, we want to come back and, and do stuff because, um, even Donna is an honor student who won't go away because <laughs> I keep asking her to come back and do things and, and talk to my classes because of the time she was in an honors class about Alice and, and I keep having her come back. Um, and so we have, um, come to the honors dinner um, and listen to students talking about, cause all we do, I used to write a speech and then one year I didn't feel very well. So I was like, so I just went and I handed the microphone around and for two hours students just shared stories about why they were in honors, what they liked about honors um, and, and students who were in honors cause it's open to anyone um, ask questions about it. Um, sometimes the faculty come and they talk about what they're gonna be teaching next semester. Um, that's honors related, so they can kind of, you know, get people excited about it. Um, Dr. Nye usually comes, I make him talk to. Um, but, but yeah, and the, we're going to be handing out shirts. We have honors talks, the convocation at the end of the semester. You are all welcome always to, um, to attend those and, and share. And I have a recording of the spring one because um, our fine supporter, Steve, couldn't make it. So I recorded it. I made sure it was recorded. Um, and I will happily share that too. If folks want to hear more of Ash's story, she wrote her whole story about honors through the lens of Alice in Wonderland. It was a reflective essay for that class about how she ended up at FOCC in honors classes and so to, to, to break the cycle of generational trauma. And so that's one way is, is just being getting honor shirts, being visible um, and, and supporting the students and showing them that, you know, I don't know if they need to, to know that that they're supported because they know they do know. Um, but but anything like that. But I will continue brainstorming if anything comes up out. That's awesome. I mean, I had this through. So to Donna's <clears throat> comment and to your quote, we'll go for it. <laughs> All right. I like it. Um, yeah, I I you know I I didn't want to write a speech and do anything fancy. I wanted to go and talk about honors because I'm passionate about it and I don't I don't need fast fancy speeches or or to have a plan and if I'm gonna say we'll go for it to the board of trustees then so be it. I'm gonna do it. I mean the first day I met Dr. Nye and two different samples on. Um I didn't even notice it. I don't think he did either, but um but yeah when when I when I met Dr. Ortiz, I, I gave her an honor seat. So I'm like, I I this is the thing that this is this is my hill. This is the legacy I want to leave at FLCC is is to take what Kurt built. Um, which is, is an amazing foundation and, and to build on that and, and to get more students to realize that, that they too are smart enough. Um, and that, and that there is something about being comfortable that makes you much more willing to be uncomfortable. Um, and for I'm good if you can't get enough students in it, so have at it. All right, excellent. We'll, we'll make a deal with you. We'll, we'll give you the go ahead if you find us to come back and tell us how some of these other students are doing and bringing them back so we can hear their stories because we're very interested in it. Here, here. I'd love to hear here, here. it. Absolutely. I do have a couple of questions. Sure. But I think in, in the five years that I've been here, I have, this is the most I've learned about the honors program. 
no fault of anyone's, myself. Um, but I do have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so are the students selected? Nope. I, I don't understand the whole concept. The only thing you have to do at FLCC to be an honor student is to sign up for an honors class. Because okay. I because my I so firmly believe that you don't have to be an honor student, you can become one. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to set up GPA requirements to get in or you know, I have so many students who discover honors because they signed up for the Lord of the Rings class because they love Lord of the Rings. And if I shut it to only honor students, A, the course would never run, and B, if it did run, it would only ever have those students in it, where it wouldn't bring in students who are like, I really like, like, I really love horror, so I'm going to take a horror class. Oh, it's honors? This is cool. I want to take these other honors classes now. So I keep it open to everybody. It's the exit piece where I mean, a student can go through their time at FLCC and only take two honors classes. They'll show, still show up as honors classes on their transcript, so it still has that nice weight yeah. to it. They just don't have the honor study scholar piece, which is a specific designation for those who exit with the appropriate GPA and the appropriate number of credits. Okay. Um, so it's more of an exit program than it is an entrance one, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah. So in high school, how, how did kids know about this in high school? I, I, I just, I, is it because they were honor students in high school? They sometimes like that yeah. with the honors program at FLCC. Is that how they know sometimes, about this? Um, sometimes, sometimes there's this negative connotation. The, just the word honors in like honor societies, like yeah. um, National Honor Society is, is NHS, sure. um, is that's part of it. And and so they find it, they see honors here and assume it's the same thing. Okay. Um, they might find, like I've had students who will show up in my classes and they'll come up to me afterwards and go, yeah, you talked in my orientation and it sounded really cool. So I, mm -hmm. I signed up for one of the classes. Um, one of the things I do want to do, and Dr. Nunn and I have talked about this, is go into the high schools and talk about what honors is at FLCC and okay. how it's not what they necessarily expect that it is. Okay. Um, but to do outreach, I needed you know more space and time to do that, and yep. and it's been you know it's been a hectic few years. <laughs> so, uh, is there a cap to how many students can be and? technically enrolled in the program or it's by classes. So yes, it's, it's just like half of the class, right? And honors honors classes are um, traditionally a little bit smaller caps. Um, like there, it'll be 18 for an English 101 instead of 24 because it's easier to work. Yeah, it's still too large, <laughs> um, but it's easier to work one on one with students um, in a smaller setting and it and allows to us to all sit around together in a circle and, and conversations. Um, I do also invite folks to come down into Hemlock Hall at any point, or any, if anyone wants to come into one of my honors classes and, and mm -hmm. sit in and experience what an honors class feels like, that we can make that happen. Tour. Tour. One more question. Road trip. Tour. <laughs> Tour. My room is the one with the purple wall. I do want to go yes. okay. <laughs> Two more questions. Okay. Okay. Um, how, how does, is there an honors program in the four-year schools that this Continues into uh, not it's we don't have articulation agreements necessarily, but um, there was a lot of things that I was working on before COVID hit and budgets got crazy that um, I just haven't been able to pick up again um, at this point. Um, like the the National Collegiate Honors Council, I was going to bring in a program reviewer to come in and do a review of our program um, and then start making. I have been in conversations with Brockport, um, but then their honors has gone. Uh, little, uh, it's not really there anymore, but but I know that students have have had invites, and I've also had students who come back and um, those of you who know Bucket Bucket's in, at yeah. the University of Buffalo now um, working on their uh, bachelor's, and they said they that their honors classes over prepared them for the three hundred level classes at UB, and I was like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, I'm like, does that mean mine are too hard? And they're like, no, that just means that I I was well prepared, but um. But yeah, I don't, I don't have any transfer stuff, but, but if a student has the honor stuff coming out of here, then I'm pretty sure they're being boarded by the honors at the four years, but that is something that I do want to um, explore. And last question, mm -hmm. how is your new home? I love it. I need a couch of mine though. I have the most boring furniture in mine, but, um, but I've been um, putting, um, I've been putting up uh, student art on the walls. My purple wall is fantastic. Um, I brought in a chessboard. It's a Lord of the Rings chessboard because why nice person? Um, 
So yeah, it's not. So the transition from being in the house yeah. to over here has. We're already getting, um, we're seeing conversations happen. Um, students, well, um, students will stay in the room afterwards and continue conversations. I've had multiple nice. conversations wandering down the hallway after class. So yeah, it's, it's, it's working um, it out. feels alive. Good. Has the proximity to the library been beneficial? Yeah, um, not not just for the bathrooms either, but the proximity <laughs> library <laughs> and the writing center as well. Um, both of those are are very nice um, supports to have nearby. In fact, I have um, the writing center. And Nick is coming down to talk to my whole class because he can just pop down. So yeah, nice. the other day I heard piano music coming down the hallway because Nick was in his classroom playing the piano. It's really good to know because I also sit in the foundation board. And you know we had to make that decision, and it was a hard decision yeah. to make because you've always had a nice, secure home over there. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad the transition has gone well. Yeah, it it's still. I mean, it, it's obviously a work in progress, and we'll continue working on it. Um, but so far, early signs are quite good. I'm very pleased. Can I add to that really quick? Mm -hmm. I've had like conversations with my classmates that I have never met before happen in the classroom. And like go out the hallway and then to the library like we are becoming friends we're building a community and it's just super easy to have that comfortable space and then have another space right there where we can continue things after class or that's it it's really convenient and it's like it's very welcoming that's great to hear yes donna i have two comments i'd like to share with my fellow trustees <laughs> one is that based on my experience um with Trissa's classes I have to say I was um uh impressed is not it, it's an understatement I was really awed by um the approach to teaching I mean it really is a college level seminar class is I mean what you would be familiar with as opposed to um the traditional class. Uh, and the other thing was that we've talked about high flex, high flex, high flex. And Trista had invited me to come and do um, a guest lecture last year and forgot to prepare for a high flex classroom because she also does high flex work. So I think the those are two educational elements um, that I find really, really intriguing uh, and inclusive about this program. One of the things, um, my classes aren't truly high flex, they're in person remote. Um, so students have to attend class, but they can do so remotely. Um, and honestly, it's one of the, the silver linings of the pandemic is, is doing that. And I will never not do it because, well, first of all, um, if you've not heard of um, Yuvraj, he is a student who lives in Delhi, India. Um, and he is a student here because we answered his emails. Um, and the other community college he wrote to did not. Um, and now he is the vice president of Student Corp. Um, and he's something else too. Um, but he's an honor student and um, and he signed up. He was he was afraid last semester to sign up for a 200 level honors class. So I invited him to come remotely to visit the class that was the Alice in Wonderland class that was after right after his class. And he um, he stayed. He could, he participated, and he couldn't have done any of that without the remote. And it also allows the neurodivergent students who wake up in the morning and go, you know, I can't get out of bed today because the depression's too bad, or or you know, I have too many issues with the kids, or I'm sick, or they come in remotely and they can still participate. It's great. Right. And that's how Eliza took class last semester. In this semester, they're in the room because. They want to be in the room, but I felt so comfortable online that I had to come in in person and get even more. Um, I wouldn't be here without that remote option. Yeah. So yeah. Wonderful. Any other questions or comments? Um, that's how I became um, my class with Bliss. Uh, I he offered us if we wanted to be online, we could. And I was like, I'll just stay in my bed and be online. And uh, I really loved the class, and I was like, I have to come in person. And I stayed in person every single day after that. I loved it. Um, but since it was during the pandemic, uh, when students were sick, they still really wanted to attend class because that's how much fun we had in honors. Yeah, we had um, one semester, we had a um, Miss and Monsters. We had a student um, 
is the humanities alumni award winner this semester actually she um she had an ill child and, and didn't want to risk the child's exposure to anything so it's so it took the class remotely and that semester um we sent her a package and i sent um your project package as well because i wanted him to have on his shirt and an flc so it sees why because it's not like he's going to go to the bookstore so we gathered a whole bunch of stuff and put it in a box and shipped it off the indian form um and and he's periodically shows up with his flc seizure on him <laughs> it's, it's fantastic he loves this guy he absolutely adores this guy he said, um, he said coming here was the best decision he ever made in his life. So we're doing good work here and I want to keep doing good work. Well, I think we're all in favor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank Have you. a good rest of your meeting. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That was it. Motion to adjourn. Uh, motion to adjourn. Thank you. Uh, second. Oh, I can second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> motion passes, and our next meeting is Wednesday, November first. Okay, uh, George. Um, oh, I'm stop. Sorry. Um, Steve. I can be George. You're on. George. <laughs> <Okay>. Steve. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody, appreciate that. Uh, let's call to order the October fourth. Finance and Facilities Committee meeting of the Board of Trustees of Finger Lakes Community College is 5.18 p.m. Uh, first, uh, a review of the September 6, 2023 minutes. Again, thank you, Penny, for putting those together. Any changes, comments, questions? Perfect again. Way to go, Penny. Appreciate that. Jason, please update us if you would on the yeah. budget and other finance items. blow it up so we don't have to numbers. Um, so here is our uh, preliminary end of year uh, financials um, revenues. We are slightly up um, from what we had budgeted. Um, some of that is related to kind of our out of county charges. Um, and we had a little bit of a decrease in our state aid. Uh, Non-credit revenue are still working those numbers as of year end, but um, again, this is preliminary, doesn't include our stimulus funds that we receive. Um, we are continuing to work through year end entries. I'm taking a detailed look at the, at the financials themselves to see, to ensure that entries from bond and deal last year has been cleaned up into the current year. Um, isn't affecting our operations or our operating numbers here. So it's taking a little bit more time to, to close uh, at the end of August um, financials. But the plan is to find a deal, does start their audit in November, on November 7th. So um, at the next board meeting, have a, have a better look at where our year end entries have fallen out, which would include our additional bad, any bad debt reserve, um, our year end rules. We have some year end. Payroll rules that we need to put in work. So we can scroll down. I just had two questions. Yep. The, the other counties would be the chargebacks. Other counties is your chargebacks. Yes. And the major item or two in miscellaneous would be? Miscellaneous is some of your, uh, there are some fees in, in, in that, um, as well as um, what else has been in there. Um, There's other it's just miscellaneous revenues that you know the 1.7. I have to look back and see what we had. Well, it's lots of little ones as yeah, opposed to there is a 25 percent of something. There's not a 25 okay. percent or so. Keep going. Thanks. Um, and then down in in your expenses, as I mentioned, we have some accruals that we still need to work in there. Um, salaries, you'll see that we do have a, a pretty sizable difference in our budget versus our actuals. Um, you know, I'm anticipating about another 500,000 as we get to our payroll accruals at year end. Um, some of that, a lot of that is based on just vacancy savings that we've had uh, a lot of turnover and that will affect both the salary line as well as the benefit line um, that, we, that we've projected. So 
um, that's where we see some of that savings that has come into um, for this year. The, the net, oh, there's the net. Yeah. Equipment and util utilities was a little bit up. Um, again, need to just dissect that number a little bit more to see why we were off on our budget. Um, it could just be a geography thing uh, to move some numbers there. Um, but. And I, I still have also before the when I publish these numbers, um, we're still moving some grant activity. Uh, some of it got charged to operating, so we'll move that down into the grant activity line. So I expect those numbers to increase. The five million that you see. Uh, and your grant revenue and grant activity for a budget that is just that looks at your budget over a five year or however long the length of the grant is. So we're not, we still have four or 3.3 million to spend, um, but you know, it, it's over a time, time frame. So we load the full budget versus just an annual budget for that year. Questions? Great. Okay. Resolutions or move right to resolutions. We're going to take those four. Yeah. Please. Okay. Uh, the first resolution that was in your packet was uh, to approve the interpreter and transcription services for FLCC. Uh, these are for our students um, that have services. Uh, we anticipate about $100,000. And we'll use the vendors that are indicated in the resolution empire interpreting vital signs and, and language matters i have a question about this one yep has flcc uh, explored hiring someone versus having to outsource for these ser services or would it be too hard like because one person can't be in two places at, at the same time i can speak to that um, we have looked at that also for um, on occasion when we have to come um, to the particular ADA accommodation. It is exceedingly expensive. Um, the interpretation will require someone to only interpret for um, a certain period of time and then they have to be switched out. Yeah. So you really have to hire two full time people minimally. And then when you add student services on top of that, you may have one student in one place at one time and another student at another time. So you really need to have the flexibility that a contract one additional layer is, although all of us are familiar with ASL as the predominant um, means um, within the deaf community, there are variations of different sign languages used and we need to be able to accommodate that need between the use of the contract. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, coming from RIT, you know, we had NTID right there. So it was a lot of NTID individuals yeah. that were able to come in and interpret when we had meetings and stuff. Mm -hmm. I had asked that question earlier. And it was one of the applications that you have. It's just that rotation. But every yeah. time you add an interpreter at RIT, there's always two that came along yeah. um, so that they could uh, move through the meeting and have that uh, exchange with them. So. Thank you. I think the one thing we can do is just ensure that you know, we continue to look at these contracts and dissect them and see, ensure that we're getting the best pricing. But it, mm -hmm. they're hard to predict because of our student population. And mm -hmm. sometimes, some years you don't have the need for those services, other years you mm -hmm. exceed that. Amount. So it, it's always just trying to work through during that capital best rate. Um, the next resolution is to just extend our interim financial aid support. Um, so uh, beginning of or end of September, we brought in our permanent um, financial aid director, um, but we want to be able to help bridge that gap um, from her transition onto the team. Uh, so we're asking for um, us to extend that contract with um, pro, pro education um, and not to exceed $10,000. Yep. Um, the next uh, resolution 
This was actually a, um, an error in our last resolution. We had this asbestos uh, resolution last month. We had 15,000. We just have to, that is actually a, a $5,000 extension. So that's just to get that corrected for the, um, the county. Thanks. And the final one. Um, and then the uh, last resolution is to approve the purchase of our autos, uh, which had our leases expiring. These autos that we are, are looking to buy out of the leases are um, the two police SUVs uh, that were purchased and are at least starting 2016, 2017, as well as President Nye's car. Um, the reason for this is we look at uh, the mileage on the cars and the shape that they're in. Um, it, it seems more advantageous to have those um, for the long term um, and not have a lease um, that we're, we're utilizing. So. Informational items. Um, first one is just contract renewal for our snow removal services. Um, true, true long. That's just the renewal. The next one is our uh, strike structure license agreement um, with singular wireless uh, to utilize our tower um, for cell services. We'll We'll receive 18,000 per year uh, for that. So that will go on our miscellaneous revenue uh, line. And then the last informational item is just budget transfers. Uh, some costs around this. Is that tower on the hill somewhere up in back? It's on top of our, um, I don't know, I don't know if it's on the clock tower. Oh, is it? Okay. It's curious. It already this the yeah. tower does. Okay, yeah. So it's just putting they're putting, equipment, there. On. They're putting equipment on him. Final questions for Jason. Anything else you'd like to offer? No, I alluded to the final deal audit and starting 11 15. This will be our year end audit. So they'll start doing preliminary work then. Uh, come in December, December 4th through December 11th to do a lot of their testing. And then the a week of January 3rd or January 10th to, to kind of wrap up the audit. So hopefully by the February timeframe, they're presenting. Final statements to the committee and then we'll bring it to the board. So, the timeline, yeah, we had a committee meeting and it uh, sounds like it's right on, yeah, right on the mark. Yeah. Final, final questions. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. <clears throat> please, a motion to adjourn okay. this afternoon. Thank you, George. A second, please. Thank you, Joan. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions carried. Back to you. Okay, if it pleases the rest of the board members, we have two executive sessions tonight. It's only 530. I'd like to go right through the meeting so that the staff can meet at the end of the regular meeting. There's no reason why we should have to stay later. Yeah. All right, if that's all right, then I'm going to call the board of trustees meeting at FLCC for October 4th to order. The first uh, part of our meeting will be uh, public comment. Is there anyone here or online that would like to make a comment at this time? Please come forward and identify yourself, please. Hi, my name is Penny Hankins, and I'm here representing the Geneva Women's Assembly and the LGBTQ plus community. The Geneva Women's Assembly is a feminist grassroots organization dedicated to the liberation of working class women and gender minorities. I have come here today to present an online petition that has been circling in the Finger Lakes community and throughout FLCC regarding FLCC Media Production Specialist Bill Peeler's continued employment at FLCC despite his well-documented public hate speech against the LGBTQ community on Twitter. There are many examples of Peeler's anti-LGBTQ rhetoric that occurred this year on his public Twitter page, and I would like to read just one of his tweets. Peeler stated in January of 2023 that love is love is sick code for advocacy of sexual deviance and depravity. 
saying it twice doesn't make it virtuous or even legal. Doubly so when applied to children. Love is love is a well known phrase that represents the LGBTQ community and its desire for equality. The peeler twists the popular saying, comparing the LGBTQ community to pedophiles and calling us immoral in every way. Bill Peeler deleted all the offensive tweets off his public Twitter page after he was found out. We have screenshots of plenty of his offensive tweets portraying LGBTQ plus individuals as sexual deviants. If you would like to read them, please reach out to me. We could first report reported Peeler's hate speech to FLCC last spring. And as of today, I do not know of any discipline that was handed out to Peeler because of his anti LGBTQ rhetoric, even though as an employee, he represents you, an educational institution that claims to be supportive of the queer and trans communities. If that is the case, why hasn't anything been done about Peeler's hate, hateful speech? As I said, it was on a public webpage that anyone could access. FLCC students and college and colleagues often check out their professors or other staff members by looking at their social media presence. It is very common practice to do this. And throughout the first part of 2023, Peeler's Twitter page was full of lies and hate regarding the LGBTQ community. Your lack of action that led to this petition. I would be happy to provide you with a flyer. I have one here that has a QR code so you can access the petition to read it if you want to see the full text. But for now, I will read to you some of the key um, parts of the petition. It states, we the undersigned have formed this petition to demand that the FLCC terminate the employment of William J. Peeler Jr. as he, as he has violated FLCC's policies and mission and will cause future harm to students, staff, and the reputation of FLCC. Peeler's consistent harassment and bigotry towards the LGBTQ plus community has been well documented documented in the Finger Lakes Times and has resulted in his censor, censure by the Geneva City Council. While Mr. Peeler's public acts have received public comp condemnation, we are concerned that he continues to work alongside and supervise members of the LGBTQ community at, at FLCC that he is loudly disparaged. A college campus should be a place where everyone feels welcomed and a sense of belonging. While a diverse, while a diversity of viewpoints and people is welcomed at a public campus, dehumanizing individuals or groups of people is defined as hate speech and harassment by New York State law, and this is not acceptable. We have collected over 160 signatures so far on our petition that as asked FLCC to fire Bill Beeler. Of those 160 signatures, over 50% are affiliated with FLCC in some way or another as students, parents of students, alumni, or faculty. More than 50 of those signatures are from FLCC students. This despite the fact that if we were at that if we were active, we were actively barred from speaking with students about the petition by student life office, who told us the petition was not campus business. I personally do not understand why we cannot hand out information on a public SUNY campus, yet Bill Peeler can call LGBTQ, LGBTQ individuals pedophiles and still keep his job here. Is this the type of person you want to be representing your school? Maybe you'll listen to some of your students. Here are some of the comments left by FLCC students when they signed the petition. First, everyone deserves to feel safe, especially at an educational institution. FLCC cannot reasonably believe that 
his repeated statements make any member of the LGBTQ community feel either safe or welcome here. Surely this outweighs any other consideration. The second comment, I am concerned by the safety for the safety and the dignity of any member of the LGBTQ community who may need to work with or interact with Bill Peeler. Third comment, please keep this person from harming vital members of our community. Fourth comment, higher education is no place for hatred and a person who openly opposes the rights and freedoms of the LGBTQ plus community is doing that. Please remove Bill Peeler. Fifth comment, I came to FLCC for the inclusiveness of the campus. I've only heard good things about this campus, knowing that, but knowing now that a professor, someone in power is harming students just like me, feels like a betrayal. Please keep this campus safe. Sixth comment, FLCC is supposed to be open to everyone without judgment or fear of being outcasted. Being that I am bisexual, to learn of healers hateful comments makes me fearful to be at, F at FLCC. What happens if I end up in one of his classes? I shouldn't have to worry about hiding who I am due to fear of a person who is in a position of power or authority, which is why I support this petition to fire Bill Peeler for being a professor at FLCC. In the last comment, Mr. Peeler's actions and comments are inexcusable. There may be freedom of speech, but not freedom from consequences. I hope FLCC stands for its LGBTQ plus students and faculty and follows through with enforcing its code of content, conduct. Ultimately, that is what we are asking for, for you to enforce your code of conduct. The First Amendment to the Constitution does not protect Mr. Peeler from repercussions for his acts of abuse and harassment. First Amendment precedent clearly states that, employ that employers may create codes of conduct and expectations for employees so long as they do not violate the employee's civil rights. There is no right to harassment, bigotry, or violence. That is the behavior Mr. Peeler has engaged in and, is not, and it is not protected by the First Amendment. Mr. Peeler's behavior does, however, break many FLCC employee policies, and it runs counter to the New York State <laughs> Civil Rights Laws. Specifically, his behavior violates the following and many more policies. It violates the FLCC non-discrimination non policy, the FLCC Title IX policy, and it also um, does, uh, violates the it, New York State Human Rights Laws Gender Expression Non-Discrimination Act. Please listen to your students and to the LGBTQ community FLCC is no place for a person like Bill Peeler. Remove him now from his position at FLCC. Thank you. Do you want this? You can um, hand it right over here, please. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Is there anyone else who would like to speak tonight? There is a call-in user, and if um, that was the direction for somebody remote, and they have to um, press Say, star you... six on their phone to unmute themselves. So I'm not so sure if this person just called in or if they want mm -hmm. to speak, but that was the direction. Okay, for, uh, can, can to, we ask them person. if they wish to speak? Is there anyone who is um, online? Wish to speak at this time? And that remote caller can press star six if that's what they want. They can do star six if they would to unmute to... themselves. Somebody on right now? Yeah, they're they're yeah. up there if, if they want to. Is, are they muted? Yes, so they're not unmuting themselves. So you need to unmute yourself if you wish to speak and state your name.
They could be just muted. Mm -hmm. Okay, seeing that they are still muted, I'm going to assume that they are not interested in speaking and I will move on with the hearing. <clears throat> the first is the approval of the uh, consent agenda, minutes, and resolutions. Will somebody make a vote? Move it. I'll move it. Thank you. Steve, thank you for the second. Um, uh, resolutions. And I have, um, we have a, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passed. Um, old business. New business. Pierce report, Dr. Knight. I uh, will keep my report short. Everything I wanted to talk about, except one thing is in there. Um, we do have uh, the SUNY transformation funds. I just want to keep uh, the board up to pay up to uh, date uh, on those funds. It's one million twenty thousand dollars, and a good majority of that's going into the ASAP program, which is a program similar to our PACE program to help students succeed. It's pretty intensive. It's going to take uh, a lot of work, but it's been very successful in CUNY and also at Westchester Community College. And we really are proud that we received the $968,000 grant from the Department of Agriculture to be able to get our college out in further areas of the community, uh, especially in the uh, rural areas that that grant is to help us get our presence out, do, uh, utilizing the various technologies that are available uh, throughout much of the rural areas that don't have the ability to be able to get connected to our college. And finally, as you know, we had uh, an incident recently uh, on campus uh, where campus police had to be involved with a student. Uh, and I want to let you know that we're working on uh, after action activities for that to make improvements to include uh, uh, more cameras and security and security that's linked to our suites as well as to the college. Uh, we'll have a test of the system coming up soon to be able to uh, make sure that our uh, we're, we're more accurate and up to date with who is on the list to get notified. We had folks that have been notified that we're not students anymore, for instance. Those who are not able to change their data, that's been changed, so anybody can go in right now, change their data, and there will be a, a notice that will go out to let people know that, so then they can change that data for their cell phones to be able to get in uh, to take care of things. And also to uh, um, make sure that people understand the different uh, tech. Uh, tech, technical terms in terms of are we sheltering in place or a different type of activity based on what was going on. Those are some of the things that are being worked on. Uh, campus police has been getting out to various areas, for instance, department chairs to talk to them about those activities. And there's more we need to do. State one thing, we uh, cannot plan for the perfect execution of an emergency event. If you do, then we'll be planning for failure. But you plan the best you can to react and adapt to what you do have to make sure you can you can reach as many as the people as you can as fast as you can to accomplish what you can and afterwards then we have to ruthlessly be able to pursue those things we can do better uh next time to be able to make sure we're even more prepared in the future that's my report subject to any questions you might have um president's report we are um the chair's report we are um uh, myself, Dr. Nye, and Trustee Cushman are going to a national convention next week. Uh, we hope to have a lot of information to bring back to you at the following meeting. And uh, I have nothing else. I vote to go to committee. Uh, students. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh I'm oh, what? You're okay. Um, uh, yes, Trustee, um, we're going to go to student uh, reports. Yeah, um, I'll start with my last bullet point. Um, Going off with uh, what you said, uh, um, students and I feel like campus police handled this uh, situation well. Um, we all got text messages and emails, and we all saw it immediately. And they're keeping us up to date as it's happening. Um, so we felt really comfortable. And then, um, you know, I'm glad you addressed this. The only thing that I kept hearing from students was the concern that other students and their friend that graduated were getting it at other colleges and there was a bit of confusion. But uh, I'm glad to hear that they're updating the system and working on uh, the technical terms for things. Um, as So other things I'd like to touch on. Um, so we're kind of getting past the pandemic a little bit. We're still suffering consequences of it, unfortunately. But uh, faculty, staff, and students uh, are starting to notice uh, there's more um, activity on campus and students are coming out, we're participating. 
uh, clubs have more people um, since the pandemic and sports teams are huge. Uh, the walking sports team in particular, we had so many people come out to our open house. Now, I'm, I'm a little biased because I've only been here during the pandemic. I didn't see it beforehand, but it's so amazing to see the difference over the past few years. Um, and even some of the clubs I was talking to, they have so many students coming out and participating. So it's, it's nice to see campus lively again. Um, as well as I, I'd like to share um, our pantry. Uh, there's a new software called Pantry Soft, and this will offer students um, a pri privacy rather than scheduling appointments to go pick out the food and everything. And most of the time they don't have what they want. So this online uh, version is kind of like, um, if you can imagine, if you ever use like Meals to Go or anything like that, uh, everything is on there that they have in stock and you just click what you want and then you show up and you pick it up. Uh, so it's a lot more discreet and the students ha don't have to fumble around uh, coming up with the appointments and everything. Um, it's a more dignified way to collect groceries and kind of keep that privacy. And uh, so they have a three year contract with that. And I was really excited to hear about that. I think that's a great initiative. Other than that, that's all I have to share for this meeting. Any questions or comments? Yeah, follow on this, the student for approved that software. And yep. the other piece that you may not know is that staff was doing this with pencil and paper. Um, yeah, which, which is not going to help anybody. No. And they did it once a month too. So, you know, this is mm -hmm. a huge uh, and, and uh, so kudos course. to the student work for mm -hmm. stepping up on that. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Um, our uh, committee meeting, uh, Jeff isn't here. Uh, Steve, would you like to make any comments on you? No, Jason covered it. Uh, we had a nice uh, session and uh, meeting and update from our uh, auditors and uh, the timeline that Jason spoke about um, really keeps us on schedule and uh, uh, we're delighted that's going to happen in this fiscal year. So um, that's all I'd add at this point in time. George, you were there, which was obviously not here today, but uh, it was a fine meeting and uh, that we had it in October, September, I should say. So uh, just recovering from some surgery rotator cuff surgery so i'm sorry you couldn't be here let us step in and uh obviously don is not here uh tonight either he's also recovering from surgery it's been the surgery uh week for the board of trustees here and uh so we will not have an in-person uh, comment from him we wish both him and uh jeff well uh foundation we have the uh, golf ball drop next week and what's the deadline excuse me for you for bringing your money in Okay. Till it drops. Don't tell us that. <laughs> no, 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 not after. Not a minute after. Okay. Um Let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry, Dana, board development. Yes, we have um, a meeting scheduled for Friday. Penny has set up a uh, WebEx, so we will be meeting um, at 4 o'clock. And um, getting back on track with our policies. And do you um, want to make any comments on um, NYCCP? Uh, just a quick comment um, about the conference. Uh, FLCC will have a huge presence there this year, and I'm hoping that some of you may consider coming up for that. Uh, General McCausland, uh, Chuck McCausland, who uh, was on the board, I think, for several terms, um, and has uh, spent many years after he got off the board with the association, has received an award. And um, Christy, we have won the Innovation Award for our augmented reality in um, the anatomy and physiology department. And Christy Parker has been invited to do a half hour presentation on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a, a second trustee is required, I will be, as a, is required as part of the presentation, I'll do a very brief update on how 
how we may be moving forward in the XR um, expanded reality um, market with some other ideas such as manufacturing and other potential areas. Um, we're also uh, hosting a wine tasting uh, during the reception for the banquet on Friday evening. With our wine. With student wine. Yes. So uh, Dr. Nye will be our sommelier for the evening. <laughs> <Get strained. laughs> I, I, I'm assuming that you have, um, you would send a message around about your license being renewed. I assume that that will be. Uh, Gina, I talked, or I got an email from Gina today, the, the uh, vice tasting license, will, she says it's being renewed, renewed in time. It's being renewed next week. Excellent. Or being submitted for renewal next week. Thank you. So, and student trustees are very welcome. When is it? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me for a date. <laughs> it is the early, early November. Two weeks before my 21st. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure we get, oh, okay. get the date sent out to you. It's just after this meeting. I remember I remember it's like our third, that Thursday yeah. night arrival and it's all day Friday. So. Yes. The, I will say that the conference is so jam-packed this year that they were struggling to figure out how to get all of the presentations in. Um, so it's a, I suppose a good dilemma to have. So there is some consideration to um, perhaps expand it back to, it used to be a three-day conference, we made it a two-day conference for economical reasons, but um, there seems to be more participation and, and um, both from a presenter side as well as participant side. So I would appreciate your feedback on how you feel about having a three day conference again, as opposed to two days, uh, because some of the sessions now have to be concurrent. Um, so we were trying to figure out a way where new trustees who go to the three hour boot camp, the trustee Institute can don't have to miss out on presentations because of, of that training. So um, I appreciate your feedback. And I just wanted to say that the organization, the um, structure of the organization, participation by members has been really, really strong uh, this year under the leadership of Alan Williams from um, Monroe Community College. And George can probably speak to that as well. But there is, um, there is now concern that we have um, done so well with our advocacy efforts that how do we afford this going forward? So there is some discussion about how much can we afford? There's some discussion about um, the President's Association who's been working with us on this. They are a 501c3 membership association, not an advocacy group. NYCCT is in, is a 501c6, and so there is some discussion about how involved they can be and how we can continue to be equal partners with the restriction that they have moving forward. And um, I believe that uh, annual dues have gone out and we've already had some early responses from community colleges uh, for the dues for the organization. So I would encourage everybody to uh, to continue to participate, especially through the educational modules. Um, people are finding those to be very helpful. Conversation maybe for a later day, but if you considered multiple charters, 501c3, 501c6, or is that not allowed? NYCCT, and that's part of what I want to talk to you about. NYCCT has two. Oh, we, are, we we have a foundation. Right. Well, that's true. That supports that's it. true. That's the fundraising the, arm. Okay. Right. That would be something that you would need to speak to the President's Association, and you have a an executive committee member here with Dr. Nye. It so. is being discussed and worked through um, legal support right now. Okay. Um, you guys are already on it. Great. All right, um, George, do you have anything else you want to add for student corp? 
I, I my the uh, I've got a report in here. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll just quickly say that um, first meeting uh, out of the blocks at a full sprint, probably the most diverse group I've ever seen, and how well run the meeting was and how comfortable they were in their roles. Um, I have to give a, a shout out to uh, Jenny. She, um, they were so prepared. It was, I always gush about these students, but it, it's amazing. So, uh, and I, I've got uh, a request that uh, with Dr. and I at the, um, at the retreat to bring up a, a potential idea how we could help with them. Hey, you might want to add just, could I, if you're done with your committee report, You've been doing very extensive work on the advocacy of Jan. Extensive. Don has talked about it. You might want to provide a little bit of an update mm -hmm. about where we're at. Sure. And where we're at uh, as of today is um, we have uh, we've, we've laid out our, our approach, um, which is going to deal with equity, equity in, in um, that the student, that it's equity in students, not institutions. So uh, we have a much higher rate of a percentage of underserved students, um, students of color, et cetera, health students at community colleges. But because of the funding cutbacks, where the four-year colleges are the 35th most expensive, so we're the pretty inexpensive compared to the rest of the country for the fifth most expensive in the country. So our approach is to really focus on, and, and it's really going to be the trustees at the tip of the spear pushing some of these items with the, as opposed to the presidents because of the relationship with them. But we, 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 we respect that they have to maintain that relationship, but there are things that we we, we met with a number of trustees. John was on the call last week, uh, and uh, I think they were. My impression was they were angry about where we are. Mm -hmm. So we will be making a little bit of noise. I'm sure, that's that's kind of where we're at. The next step will be getting meetings. We we want to organize students as a voice. We want to organize faculty potentially as a voice. Um, NICAP, the county executives, and really important businesses. Businesses, especially businesses that contribute. And employ those students. Or actually, businesses that contribute political. Oh, I see what you're saying. We'll be listening to back in the advocacy. Um, that's a public, that's a public list. That's something we have to focus on. So when you're looking at that equity, that big number you have in there, and round numbers, state aid for FTE per student for community colleges is five thousand. For four-year schools, is nineteen thousand. Just one it direction. It's 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 less than half of five thousand because that includes the county. Yeah, you're right. It does. You're right. So it's for the state aid. It's it's actually I think about twenty, and it's over nineteen thousand. So a factor of eight, almost. Our question is, why are our students different? Seven. For that, that agenda. Mm -hmm. I think the arguments, the arguments were very people. powerful uh, this year in particular. And um, I would like to thank George for his um, leadership um, when the committee's chair had some personal issues, George stepped in and um, led with great professionalism and insight. And I just want to thank him for that. Yeah, here, here. Thank great you. group to work with. Great group to work with. Any other questions, comments? Um, this evening we have two executive sessions. So basically what we will, oh, I'm sorry, Don, you have a comment. I, I actually just wanted to ask one question as sort of a part of the announcement. And has anyone here heard of a company called Open Classroom Incorporated? You have. 
maybe I can get a little bit of information from you. NYCCT has been approached by them and um, the executive committee wanted to know if anyone had any knowledge of them or experience with them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's any it. Other? All right, we're going to have two executive sessions this evening, so we will ask for a motion in a moment to go into the first executive session. When we are done, we will have a motion to come into regular session, correct? And then we have to have the second motion to go into the second executive session, and then we will move out of that and finally close out the meeting. So at this point in time, I would like to ask uh, for a motion to go into executive session to discuss matters regarding collective bargaining pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law, uh, State of New York Public Officers Law, Article 7, 105E. Can I have a motion, please? I'll motion. Okay, thank you. Second. 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 Okay, thank you. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we are in executive session. I'll give everybody five minutes thank you. to um, do whatever they have to do and to allow.